Gentleman, go ahead. Good morning. My name is David Malmuth. I'm a partner with Idea Partners, Senator Liu, and members of the committee. Thank you for inviting me to share our case study in creative placemaking. Um, we like to say that the power is in the idea. And in this case, IDEA stands for Innovation, Design, Education, and Arts. And those form the pillars of an urban mixed-use district that we're in the process of developing in San Diego. Now, we had to have a better idea in this case because when we started this initiative three years ago, we didn't own any land, we didn't have any tenants, and we didn't have much capital, which is kind of a difficult way to start an urban revitalization project. But we felt so strongly that if we could create a district that was driven by a design and technology jobs cluster that was rich in the arts, that emphasized design and educational institutions, that this could become an economic engine, not just for downtown San Diego, but for the entire region. When we, when we began this initiative, we asked ourselves, what, what really is the key? What is the, the essential thing that we need to do in order to make this district thrive? And the answer to the question is simple. We need to attract the talent that's going to make this district work. Fortunately, there's quite a lot of research and a lot of case studies that address what kind of qualities will attract the talent that make these sort of districts successful. And, and when I talk about talent, I'm really talking about the 25 to 35 highly educated cohort. It's this group that is mostly responsible for the future prosperity of cities. And what we discovered as we dug into the qualities of this group is that they're looking for urban. By a very large margin, these young people are now choosing to be in urban spaces. And interestingly, rather than just going to the place that has the best job, they're now picking the place that they want to live and then figuring out what they're going to do to support themselves. So the, the race to, to get this talent is very keen among cities who understand the importance of this cohort. These people are also looking for places with good bones. They want cities that have small walkable blocks. They want to have places that have authenticity, that have an interesting mix of buildings, new and old. They want, importantly, to shape the environment. They like a kind of a gritty quality. They're interested in having a chance to really get hands-on in shaping the quality of that community. They're very interested in diversity. Many of these kids were raised in the suburbs, and uh, they, know, they know from homogeneity. They don't want that. They want to have lots of different kinds of people and different kinds of experiences. And they're also interested in co-location. You know, sharing is the new ownership for this cohort. So sharing office space, sharing apartments. Uh, communes are back if you're reading about what's happening in San Francisco now. They're a little more upscale than they used to be, but that idea of living and working with, with people that are part of your group is, is very popular. Walkability, if I, if I had to identify one quality that was important to this cohort, it would be walkability. Because, frankly, the love affair with the car, which was my generation, that's sort of gone away. Now freedom is not having the car. Now it's being able to use transit and being able to walk. Um, use your bike, and also educational institutions. The presence of educational institutions are important in this cohort because these are kids that are coming out of educational institutions. They want to be around ideas and idea generation. So these were the qualities that we identified as critical to making a successful district. So what did we do? We found a place in downtown San Diego that has many of these qualities. This is a picture of downtown. You see that it's, it's um, the East Village area that's nestled between San Diego Bay and Balboa Park. And specifically, the Idea District refers to the 90 acres, the 35 city blocks that you see here. And what I've highlighted in orange are the key educational institutions that are part of this district already. It already has that great infrastructure that's so necessary to creating success. It has small walkable blocks. It has some interesting older buildings. It has the potential for lots of development, which is important to get to the scale that's necessary. Because we don't just want to talk about creating a thousand or a couple thousand jobs. We're talking about creating 10,000 jobs over the next 10 years. That's what we aspire to do. In order to do that, we need to have enough scale to be able to attract small companies, medium-sized companies, and large companies. And very importantly, this area also has all the entitlements in place because it was a community plan passed six years ago that allows for the density and mix of uses that can drive Idea District. Notwithstanding the fact that my background's in real estate, what we came to appreciate is the physical environment is only one aspect of making this district successful. It's really pairing a physical environment and a social environment so that you can create an innovation ecology, a, a way in which people can come together to share ideas, to collide with each other, not in cars, in, on the street, to, to meet, 
to, to, to have the opportunity for serendipity to happen, to, to have the potential for new ideas to emerge. Because the metric that we are focused on in Idea District is growing more ideas per square foot. Well, this all sounds great, so how do you do this when you have no land and you, know, you don't have any tenants and what you're trying to do is inspire other stakeholders? How do you get started? Well, in a post-redevelopment world, you know, you gotta be scrappy. You sort of start with what you got. So I wanna point out three initiatives. Two that are being developed in Maker's Quarter, which is one quarter of Idea District, and one that we're moving on, which is called Idea One. For, first, let me, t and this, by the way, is an aerial of the, of the district, and you can see, while there's some interesting pieces, there's a lot of parking lots, which are the, the death knell of urban districts. It started with an urban farm, taking a parking lot and, and using it as a way to grow things and to bring kids and show them how things are grown. And this has become very, very successful as a way of bringing community. The next step was to take the parking lot right across the street and through the techniques of tactical urbanism, turning into a place of celebration. This started about three or four months ago and now there's 40 community groups that are lined up to use this space. It seems simple, but when you are able to engage the community in the kinds of techniques that Ann was talking about, in creative placemaking and you ask them to, to bring their creativity and create these kinds of temporary spaces where you can do uh, film festivals, which is being shown here, or talks from interesting people in town doing all kinds of fun initiatives, or you ask local street artists to do their thing. Knowing all of it's gonna be temporary and that's part of the beauty of it. When you take away the notion of permanence, it really frees people up to do some interesting things. Craft fairs has been a very, another popular thing that's happening in silo. So over the last four or five months, as this has evolved, we're starting to see the sort of transformative effect that these kinds of initiatives can have. And it's because, in my belief, it's really bottom up. It really is the community speaking to itself about what its values are and what it hopes to ultimately accomplish. Now, I couldn't do this presentation, being a real estate developer, without showing you a building. So now I'm gonna show you a building. So this is our first project, it's called Idea One. It'll start construction early part of next year. And true to the principles of Idea District, it's mixed use. On the, my left-hand side, you see something that looks like an old warehouse building, which actually is a new building. If we had an old warehouse, we would be working with that, because that's sort of the sensibility of the audience that we're trying to appeal to. So it's about 60,000 square feet of creative office space, which downtown San Diego doesn't have. And that's one of the reasons that we've, we've been unable to grow jobs in downtown San Diego while we've had 20,000 residential units. The right-hand side <clears throat> is residential. We have about 200 units. There's some residential on top. This is about creating collisions in, in physical space so that we can create collisions of ideas. This is the courtyard, and this is our little microcosm. We want to have a space where we call it morphed use, where all of these communities are bouncing off of each other. And that red box you see up there that says think, that's an e-lounge. It's a co-working space that both the office workers and the residents will be able to use. So one of the things that we think we're bringing to this community is the invitation for people to come together and hopefully create the next apple. So I've talked about the what and I've talked about the how. I think it's important to finish with the why. Why are we doing this? We feel very strongly that we have an opportunity here to give lots of opportunity to a broad swath of people. And through all of these initiatives, through, through art, through design, through education, through cre creativity, we can create a model that not only grows jobs, but spreads prosperity broadly throughout this, this community. Thank you very much. Thank you.